worthy to rejoice on this feast of your glorious birth. And with Mary, your mother, and Joseph, your chosen one, to thank, praise, and adore you, crying out with the angels, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and good hope to all. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, forever. Amen. Peace be with the Church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who in his love sent his only begotten Son to us. And to the Son who was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem, and to the Holy Spirit who fills us with joy, peace, and holiness on this feast. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives, now and forever. Amen. Glory and thanks to you, eternal Son, you are without beginning or end. You are the hidden light who shines upon the world and the Ancient of Days, born as a child from the daughter of David. Today we celebrate the mystery of your love for us, proclaiming, You are wonderful, O God, you became man, yet you remain God. You are wonderful, O God, you came down to us and were born in a manger, yet you fill heaven and earth with your glory. You are wonderful, O God, the angels, shepherds, and magi come to adore you. By your birth you tore down the wall, separating heavenly and earthly beings, reconciling heaven and earth. By your birth you brought together those who are far and those who are near to celebrate your feast. At your birth the angels announced to the shepherds, to you is born this day in the city of David your Savior who is Messiah the Lord. 
Now, O wondrous child, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to help us to understand the mystery of your incarnation. Forgive our sins, free us from all distress, and remember our departing who have gone to their rest hoping in you. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. We adore you, O Son of the Father, from all eternity and Son of the Virgin born in time. When you became flesh, our eyes were able to see God, bringing us closer to the one who dwells in the heights. With the light of your knowledge, you enlightened our minds with the knowledge of the one who is beyond our understanding. Accept our incense, forgive our sins, and grant rest to our departed. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Allah
Told by Isaiah, wonderful his name shall be. Christ is born of a virgin, as a child God is revealed. Praise to you, child of wonder, hope of peoples everywhere. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and your children forever. Brothers and sisters, if only you would put up with a little foolishness from me, please put up with me, for I am jealous of you with the jealousy of God since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that, as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts may be corrupted from a sincere and pure commitment to Christ. For if someone comes and preaches another Jesus than the one we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it well enough. For I think that I am not in any way inferior to these super apostles. Even if I am untrained in speaking, I am not so in knowledge. In every way, we have made this plain to you in all things. Did I make a mistake when I humbled myself so that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel of God to you without charge? I plundered other churches by accepting from them in order to minister to you. And when I was with you and in need, I did not burden anyone. For the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my needs. So I refrained and will refrain from burdening you in any way. Praise be to God always. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Lord Jesus says, Woe be to you, O scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build the tombs of the prophets and you adorn the memorials of the righteous, and you say, 
If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have joined them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you bear witness against yourselves that you are indeed the children of those who murdered the prophets. Now fill up what your fathers measured out. You serpents, you brood of vipers, how can you flee from the judgment of Gehenna? Therefore, behold, I send to you prophets and wise men and scribes. Some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from town to town so that there may come upon you all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the righteous blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Barachiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Amen, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how many times I have yearned to gather your children together as a hen gathers her young under her wings, but you were unwilling. Behold, your house shall be abandoned, left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus left the temple area and was going away. When his disciples approached him to point out the temple buildings, and he said to them in reply, You see all these things, do you not? Amen, I say to you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another stone that shall not be thrown down. This is the truth. Peace be with you. I wish that you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Notice how delicately St. Paul has to write to these cantankerous parishioners in Corinth. Put up with me. I know I'm an idiot. Just put a deal with it. And he's, what he's talking about here in this letter to the Corinthians is really about and what the meaning of Christmas has to it is marriage. We don't usually think about marriage in conjunction with the incarnation. But you notice that in the Husoyo, it speaks about that you are the one coming into this earth who reconciles and brings together heaven and earth. So what is marriage? The sad part about things these days for us in the Western world is that for the last century, really, at least the last century, marriage has been identified with sex. And that is a great tragedy. Because ultimately, it's very logical now, after three, four, five, six generations, that you come to the logical conclusion is you don't need to be married to have sex. So people don't get married anymore. You just shack up. It's very logical. If you identify marriage with just carnal interaction, 
Well, then I don't need to be married. And once nobody really cared if I was married or not, from the 70s, 60s, 70s onwards of who cares about divorce, who cares about this, and we just move on. And so now we couple together like animals, as it says in the book of Tobias, like the mule and the ox, for the sake of passion and lust. And this is a great loss. This is why family, social networking, contact, mutual support in a community, all of it's disappearing. Because the very foundation of any kind of social or community interlocking and aid to one another is built by the blocks that we call families. And families are created not by sex. Cows don't have a lot of family units there. Families are created by marriage. Because what is marriage? Again, the question. It is commitment, it is union, and it is life. So we say, what is this child that comes into the world if not God made man, if not heaven and earth being joined together in commitment? This is God's pouring forth of his own personal existence among us, commitment. And of course, the union is very clear. This individual born from the womb of a woman is simultaneously and eternally at this point now, forever, God and man. And what comes forth from that commitment in union? Life. Life is the reason why we come together in union and commitment, not for carnal intercourse. If that was the reason, well, hey, after five years, it's kind of routine. So after that, but if it's commitment in union, then it lasts not only until death do us part, but that intimacy and union lasts well into the kingdom beyond death. Even if the matrimonial unit disappears until death do us part, that union and that commitment and that love between those two individuals flourishes forever. So St. Paul uses this image. Remember, he says, bear with me in my foolishness. Put up with my stupidity just for a little bit. Bear with me, he says. Because immediately after that, he's telling you of what the apostolic endeavor is. Why are there apostles? Why is there a priesthood? What is it meant to do? And of course, in a few weeks' time, we will commemorate over a whole week all of the deceased priests of the last 2,000 years. It's just one of the weeks of the dead that we do before Lent begins. And St. Paul is pointing out to them because what they're doing in Corinth is they're bickering and they're arguing and they're fighting and they're complaining and they're shooting off emails and they're calling each other. And they're doing all these things to rile each other up. And then they turn around and say, I'm miserable, I'm unhappy. Well, where do you think that came from? So that stirring up, that constant, constant, that's what they're doing in Corinth. This is why in the letter he says, don't you realize I asked of absolutely nothing from you when I was among you? That I preached the gospel. Is that to make you humiliated that I myself subjected myself to plundering other parishes to pay for my needs so that you would have less of a thing to complain about? This is a terrible section in this letter about who these people at that parish were. It tells you that I will take from the Philippians and I will take from the Thessalonians and I will take from these other churches because I wouldn't even dare ask you for a penny because you're so mean-spirited. That's what this text means today. And yet at the same time, what is the apostolic endeavor? It's not to complain about human pettiness. That will always be here. But you see what St. Paul does is he immediately elevates the entire vision of it that the apostolic endeavor is to be in love. And we know that in friendship and in marriage, when there is love, we really put up with an awful lot from other people that we love because we love. And therefore, what is the first answer to the question of what is the apostolic endeavor? The first is that to be in love. 
Why is St. Paul putting up with this in Corinth? Because he is in love. Charity infuses his life. In fact, we could say clearly in this passage, St. Paul is head over heels and ridiculously in love. You know, those experiences of you know, bouncing off the wall when you're at work because you're not actually doing things because you're thinking about the date tomorrow night. That's St. Paul, not in a human manner, but in a divine manner, that he's looking forward, continuing to meet this person again, which is through the veil of death. He is head over heels. That's why he says, put up with my stupidity. I know this is just ridiculous, but please bear with me. That St. Paul, in being, he is both lover and the recipient of the divine love. That is the child that is represented. That child shows us that intimacy of commitment and union. But the apostolic endeavor is also matchmaking. What does St. Paul say immediately after this line of saying, please put up with me? He says, I have worked to espouse you, to bring you as a most chaste virgin to be united to one person, the Messiah. Now, of course, unfortunately, in the last century, the word virgin makes people kind of titter and laugh. But why has the church always admired virginity? Precisely because virginity is, is about commitment and union and love and life. And because it has that commitment, it doesn't degrade itself as in the modern concept of what's a virgin or not a virgin or whether you have sex or not. That is not the definition of the virgin. It's an aspect of it clearly because it means that the virgin has not sullied themselves by just selling products everywhere and just kind of tasting everything they feel like because they feel like it. And just because these things happen, gentlemen, will you check this door? It's not locked. Thank you. Don't worry, we can keep crawling through the numbers. So, that what he's doing here is he's reminding the Corinthians, you are obsessed by certain details. You are upset by very human things. But that aspect, you're not seeing what we're actually doing in the parish at Corinth, which is precisely to prepare you and to make you be now in this perfect union and life with Christ. That's why he says, I prepare you, I've brought you as a virgin. I have brought you unsullied, fully ready for commitment, not having sold your products all around the world with lots of people just because you've gone out for dinner. That is the understanding of what virginity is. Virginity is not just, oh, I'm saving myself. It's not just that idea. Because I'm saving myself if it means, because I am waiting to be able to make that fully human commitment, then it is stunningly beautiful. And really that has nothing to do with sex. That has to do with my intention is to be com committed and to be consumed with another individual. That is the mystery of your baptism and your consecration, to be completely consumed in the fire of divine charity, to be united with Christ as two in one flesh and made that way. And he's reminding the parish of Corinth that it's you as a group. This is the ones, you are the ones as a parish that I have prepared to bring toward Christ. And when he says, as a chaste virgin, again, our word chaste in English, we associate with the, God, with the idea of no sexual intercourse. But chaste is much, it doesn't have anything to do with purity. Chaste is this chain word that you have for to chasten, to chastise. It's the same word in Latin. To be chaste means I am disciplined, I am ordered, and I am able to put things in place in that same kind of discipline and intensity that we have in the word chasten. It was wrong, so we've been chastened. Chastity, to be chaste means I am disciplined, I am ordered, I am focused, and I understand that ultimately life is about commitment, union, and divine life. 
Now do you understand the phrase a little more when he says that I have worked to prepare you, to bring you as a committed, chaste virgin to the Messiah. That is the apostolic endeavor. Straightforward, simple, honest, and ready for commitment. That is our response not only as a parish, but as individual Christians. So to be betrothed, to be committed, to be brought together in this mutual love in order to share life in union, to be productive of life. There is no Christian community, there is no Catholic parish that has this vision that is not a source of conversion of people outside. If that commitment to life is in our lives, people are drawn to that life of Christ because they see it. The same way that if for many of you know of a magnificent marriage, it may be your grandparents, it may be an aunt, an uncle, when you've seen love flourishing between that, you want to be married because that is beautiful and that support is what you want. When a parish and an individual Catholic, when they live that life of commitment to our Lord as the chaste virgin, that will produce life in the same way. I want to be what you are. That is what St. Paul means in this letter today. And that is, as I've told you over these days and weeks and months, my task, both old Maronites and new Maronites, is to bring you into that union and commitment and love which is productive of life. To be able to see the treasures which are there of the house of Maron, of Beit Marun. And when we move into that position, we will be productive of life. First of all, our cells will be healed, individually and as a community, continually healing as a process, which is what redemption is, a process. But it also means that you will become more and more and more a beacon of light. Nobody was converted by the Corinthian parishioners who were just whining and bellyaching the whole time that we hear echoed throughout both letters. But the individuals that were faithful there and the flourishing of the light of union and commitment of life, that was seen. And so St. Paul says that I feel a divine jealousy about you. Why am I angry at you in Corinth? I'm not angry because you make my life miserable. That's not a problem. That you can get over. I am jealous and I feel a divine jealousy for you. For I have promised you in marriage. I have committed you to one husband to present you as the chaste virgin of Christ. Now you can understand why he says, I am on fire with divine zeal. Because you're corrupting everything, because you're only being human. Don't you understand that grace is to open your spirit and your mind and your heart and to allow you to become so much more than what you actually are? And that's why he uses the term divine jealousy. He tells the Corinthians in these lines, you break my heart. You, are, you have received so much more of this divine love that you piddle away and that you lose. And so we ask this day, during these 12 days of Christmas, that God give us a true sense of that commitment that flows from our baptism and that flows from the radiance of the faith, the light that is given to us within our spirits, so that we can, pure or impure, conversion is always possible. The primary thing is not about actions, it's about this desire for the commitment and the union that produces life within the Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father of us, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light and light, true God and true God, the God of the Almighty, consistent and angel of the Father. To him all things were made. For our salvation, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the blood of the Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, he was crucified by the monster's power. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in the court of the He ascended to heaven. in your pews the special transfer him for the glorious nativity. Accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saints Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Stephen. Remember, O oh God, the children of our Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intent for of all the members of this parish, 
Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. John Chrysostom on page 876. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor, love and faith that are pleasing to God. On high, hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin. You are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace, accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. by all angels bless you humanity exalt you and all creation glorifies you look upon your children who call out to you purity and holiness may we offer you an acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you to your only son and to your holy spirit now and forever Amen. 
God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming, human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly is the Son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from his spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you above. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only Son. Kyrie eleison. Wabi almo haudoktum hashodi le ma bid haye. An sabe lachma bidao kodi shoto. O Barachu Kodesh, Waksoya Bertarmi Dao Karumara, Sabachula Mehne Kulhu, Ono Denita, Fahro Dila, Dachlo Faikum, Wachlov Sagi, Metakaseo Meti Heb. Hosoyon, Hombe, Wahoyed, and Alam Alameen. O Kano Alco, so Domzik, O Men Hamro, O Men Mayo, Barahu Kodesh. Ya bil talmida o karumara, sabishta wa mehne kulhu, hono denita ho, demohu dila dia tiki khadato, dakhlo faikun wakhlov sagiye, mete shadu meti heb, Khusunyum haume wa hoyin al alam alameen. Amen. Through 
this in memory of me, each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Word of God, who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin? Who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured? Who can praise your plan of salvation for us? We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood, so make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. the pledge of the life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, Grant that it may be for the forgiveness, the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shout of Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth, 
so that they may spread it faithfully. With justice and holiness, may they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed, ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious St. Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, and all who please you and profess your name. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. All the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. Deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will that in all and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. You sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity. And he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not to the 
Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours with your only Son and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Peace be with you. O oh Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity. We may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit now and forever. The graces of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And your holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to give you glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy blood, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies, and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy, and we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O oh God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the luminous cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. <laughs>